Hi, my name's Colin. Welcome to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, welcome to uh, How to Paint Watercolours with me, Colin. Grab a friend if you don't want to paint on your own. This is just a very weak wash as we start with this one of Naples Yellow. Just scrumble it in. Take that out where those trees are. Just to give them a little bit more impact later on. Down. Over these trees here. This is a mixture of uh, <coughs> cadmium yellow pale and some yellow ochre. And I just want to drop that in as well. We build up the sky a little bit on the top. I think we'll drop in some French Ultramarine and Alizarin Crimson, a fairly weak wash just along some edges. Just let it play around. This will add further interest to your sky. This is all wet in wet. With a stronger mix. I think we'll just Pull some interesting cloud shapes across. Maybe some across here. The lights are washed, we can just bring a mop brush in. Take the tops of these clouds out so they don't go too far this with a, just a piece of kitchen towel coming back to the sky and uh, adding a little bit more to it in a two stage sky once again and while we're here we can just come down to the land re-wet the whole land area just a little drop of the Naples yellow same with the cadmium yellow light and yellow ochre. Now this is just a tiny bits of light red. Maybe even just a touch of cadmium orange. Some raw umber. Just pull it through. <clears throat> Don't worry about it mixing. That's what you want. Cadmium orange and the iridium. Just a couple of strokes in there, <clears throat> and then we're going to leave that to dry. Now that the sky's dried a little bit, what I've done, I've just added some water onto the background hills. Very clean water all the way along down to the shoreline. The same on here. And into that, I'm going to put the weaker mix of the sky colour, which is the French Ultramarine and the Luzon Crimson. And I'm just going to run this across the top of the hill, let it drift down. Just pull it down with the fall of land. Touching here at the back, but onto this the top, just catching it, just catching the light. Um, light red, cadmium orange with viridian all the way along just to put a little bit of uh, same colour just for some little bit of variation just where you want to define the hills a bunch of raw lumber running through it This is a mixture of French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber with some Elysium Crimson added. And we'll just put some shapes of bushes in. And we have to leave that to dry. Now the sky area is totally dry <coughs> and your land areas in the background are totally dry. We can come back to the sky 
and this is the weaker mix of the French Ultramarine and the Legend Crimson and we can just pull this across the top of the sky just adding some interesting shapes bring this down around the uh, white area of where the cloud is just making shapes as a go some stronger paint this is wet on dry just a few streaky clouds in along the, the bottom that's it flooding ok now the sky's dried a little bit this is a mixture of the um, cadmium orange and viridian I'm just going to put the chunks of these trees in just make the chunks a little fatter and into that we can drop the mixture of French Ultramarine Burnt Umber and Alizarin Crimson wetting to wet while the paper is still wet and the paint is wet with the same colour, cadmium orange and viridian uh, we can come round here and put these two trees in once again with the darker colour French Ultramarine, Elizabeth Crimson and I'm Burnt Umber Put a bush in here. The cadmium orange and viridian. And I think we could let these two run together. Maybe some here. Softening off at the bottom. And we'll just leave that to dry for a minute or two. Now everything's dried off a bit <coughs> from the sky. We can. Uh, Put these trees in, put the branches in, French Ultramarine, Elizabeth Crimson, Burnt Umber, and just fill your tree out. I'll just do a couple and then as it just gets a bit time consuming, turn the camera off and then we'll come back when the trees are finished and have a look what they look like now the same mixture for the trees once they're dried this is um, a gold haired mop brush and I just want to put in some foliage on these trees this is the same colour French Ultramarine Burnt Umber and Elizabeth and Crimson I always bring the foliage into the tree as well. <clears throat> Same on these two. Maybe just a little, slightly a bit waterier as it's just slightly further away. just have a little of the darker stuff underneath here you can just put in the, the fall of land how the land is shaped just strengthening one or two areas up I think that will do for that and then we're going to re-wet the whole of this area here. Then with a mixture of burnt umber, raw umber and a touch of French ultramarine with a lizard and crimson. It's just adding some of your sky colour into it really. We're just going to shape the shore
This is a mixture of burnt umber, <coughs> French ultramarine, just with a touch of yellow, just to give it that muddy green that you find on some of the rocks. On this, you know, that greeny kind of mud that you find. Strengthen it up in areas, just allow it to drift a little. So with a damp brush, just soften this edge off. I'm going to allow that to dry. Just come to the cottage, <clears throat> and this is a, a little bit of the sky colour, um, well watered down. I'm going to use this for the shadow on the side of the cottage. And with a tiny bit of the darker mix, I'm just going to drop this in. There, I think. Then with some burnt sienna, I just want to bring some lines down the roof as it looks like a thatch roof. Okay, I think we should just add the fence in. Just straightforward. Don't make them all the same size. Try and vary it a little bit. Just a touch of shadow. That's at a cottage now, and I've just <coughs> re-wet under the eave, and I'm just going to add a shadow. And because it wet, it will spread. It will dry lighter. Which is what I'm looking for. Now we can just put some cottage windows in. This is just some of the uh, sky colour. Just indications. A little bit of shading around the window frame and just around the door. Maybe a couple of strokes in for some planks. Right, I've just <coughs> rewet the sea area all the way up to about here, and this is dry paper. Same here, just add some of the sky colours in, very pale, <coughs> and then we're going to dry brush over the top of them. Some of the sky colour. I don't want it too strong. Some of the yellow with the sky in again. And then once again, we have to leave this to uh, pale off, although I just might just strengthen that there. It comes into a darker area. Now that that's dried off a little and sunk into the paper, <coughs> we can go back uh, with another coat of the sky mixture, just to strengthen it up. Now then, this is a, <coughs> a squirrel brush. And then we're just going to try very lightly as we come across the light paper to hit and miss. I just get a broken effect. This corner. to leave that to dry. Now that's relatively dry we're coming back to the shoreline here and with this um, burnt umber French ultramarine and alizarin crimson we're just going to strengthen the shoreline up and then we we'll might just scrape in a few rocks. You can use any brush you like.
comes my pallet knife, maybe just a, a few rocks just around the, the shoreline, just to add the interest. Damp brush, soften off the back edge. Once again with the sky mixture, I'm just going to draw it across. The only thing that's left to do now is to put some birds in, a couple of seagulls here I think, one in the white part make it stand out, everybody says they seem to look better in threes so there's three seagulls. Have to do now <clears throat> is just to scratch some wind lines in and your painting will be finished okay that's everything completed once it's dry I've just put some uh, wind streaks in there um, I just scrubbed out some of the paint on here where it was just a little bit too heavy and I've just added a shadow around the cottage I hope you've enjoyed this video thank you very for much for watching and if you've enjoyed it please click the like button if you have any comments please comment and for further painting videos, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.